Hey, welcome. So we're going to show you uh, about doing a bit of remote pairing on Homework Zero uh, Part One uh, using um, uh, Cloud Cloud Nine. Now I've got I'm here with my pair partner Thomas. Uh, say hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Uh, and um, you know we we both got into our Hangout. Now the first thing you want to do really in the Hangout after you said hello um, is go to the uh, screen share button uh, which we've shown previously. That's the little um, green screen icon with a with an arrow that's on the, on the left when you mouse over the Hangout. So I'm just going to go and click on that. It's going to pop up a window where it asks me which desktop I want to share. I'm going to share my uh, desktop one, where I've got here. This is the um, description for the Homework Zero part one. Uh, we're going to be defining a method. And if we take the first part of it, it's three parts to that uh, part one. Uh, we're going to define a method sum, which takes an array of integers as an argument and returns the sum of its elements. Uh, and for an empty array, it should return zero. So we're going to use Cloud9. And um, once you're signed into Cloud9, as you can see here, you need to create a new workspace. Um, then once that's created, that might take a few minutes. Uh, we need to sort of hit the Start Editing button. I've got one I prepared earlier here. The key thing to do here is to grab the uh, URL of that Cloud9 instance, uh, copy that, and paste that over into the, you know, uh, if you're both in a Hangout, then the, the group chat is, is the way to go. Uh, pop that into the, the group chat and allow your pair partner uh, to, to get to that link. So you can see here now Thomas has uh, already um, looked at that. I think if, if Thomas, you, you're screen sharing there, we can just have a look. Yes, so you're looking at the same URL on your uh, desktop in a different part of the world. Uh, and on my side, because I'm the one who created the Cloud9 instance, what's happened here is that um, it's, it told me that Thomas has arrived. And then there's this, this icon on the extreme right of the screen, which is the members icon. And I click on that, I can see visitors, Thomas. And then I'm going to click on this little down chevron here, and it says grant, read, and write access. Uh, so now Thomas should be able to um, write in this environment. I'll see if I can make the uh, look good. Do you want to just uh, testing, test out um, uh, typing in that environment yeah. there? We're trying. Uh, let's see. I'm in the editor, it. and yeah, here we go. There we go. So um, now it might be a bit confusing here because I'm sharing m my view of this. We we'll just look at uh, Thomas has got this is his view, um, but so he's um, uh, written you know something in there. I can also come in and uh, even like, well I think we've got one cursor. I can I can put in can I put in a comment there, like so. So we now have a sort of a free environment in which we can both uh, both comment. I think from uh, Thomas so we end up with slightly different. Uh, terminals, but uh, anyhow, uh, if we just um, save this uh, this file, I'm going to go to my terminal here and do Ruby test rb, and there, uh, there we go. That's um, we've got a little Ruby Ruby file uh, running. So um, now, so this is the, you know we're we're in a hangout. Thomas and I can hear each other. Um, we can uh, we've got the screen shares on. We can both see. Each other's desktops. Um, the nice thing about Cloud9, I mean, there's other solutions for this, you know, Mad Eye and uh, Screen Hero and, and so on. Uh, Cloud9 is one of the ones we've been enjoying uh, recently. Let's see if we, you know, how we might get started uh, on the Homework Zero and, you know, uh, d you know, swapping driver and navigator roles. Also, if you, you lose audio, as Thomas is pointing out, there's a, a comments uh, down there as well for Cloud9. So one of the things I, I like to do actually is, is if we're getting started, is go and grab the actual um, you know what it is that we need to be doing. Let's let's clear out from this test. I guess what we could do actually is uh, we could create a new file here in the test environment, uh, and we could call this uh, homework zero part one dot rb like so. And if I double click, that should open that up. And I'm going to add what we need to do here as comments uh, at the top of this. Um, let's uh, just do it like this. So we've got. A few different bits and pieces. So um, this is, you know, relatively straightforward for, from a from a root point of view. Um, one of the things that, I, that that goes, I think, extremely well with pair programming is uh, setting things up so that you're kind of swapping driver navigator roles and you're also swapping testing sort of implementing roles as time goes. So, so if I was going to start with this, looking at this problem here, I can see well, one, I've got a kind of a corner case, and it's got, you know, for an empty array. It should return zero. So rather than rushing in and trying to just implement implement the um, 
uh, the entire method that needs to um, manage this sum and so on, I would be tempted to write some sort of uh, little test, even a, uh, just a little hacky one. So, so let's say I might say we've got some method called sum, and I could do something, I could pass it an empty array, and I should say that should be equal to zero. Um, and uh, just by saving that, if I save that, I can even just kick off run here on the top there. I get this error, which is here, which is undefined method sum for main object. Um, what I'm also tempted to do, and I, I really recommend this to everybody, is um, uh, well, we'll see. We'll, I guess we'll, we'll start. We'll start with that maybe. Um, and this, this is the point here. Often the point at which you get an error is a good point to, to switch over. So I've I've got an error there. Thomas, do you want to um, see if you can kind of address this error, this undefined method sum that we're getting? Yeah. So we should define. Define sum as a method mm -hmm. uh, to start with, but uh -huh. we should also be able to pass in something here, right? Yeah. Well, let's deal with one. Let's do. I think you know we go as slow as we can in terms of th this is um, you know I think as one gets more experience, yes, you, you can certainly uh, do those things. Let, let, let's see. Um, yeah. I mean, if, if, can you also click the run? But if if you save that file. Um, Let's see. Then, and click the uh, run button. I wonder if the, if it will come up on my terminal as well. Um, uh, how do we run uh, in this? Uh, well, there's a green run button, as you can see at the top, oh, of the, the middle of the screen. Um, yeah, actually, this works quite. Yes, and I'm not sure if you did now. Did the um, hmm? Let's see. Here. Yes. Oh, I think. Well, I think. I think maybe that's run here. Uh, it's run the Ruby process. Um, I, I think, oh no, it's still saying there, undefined method sum. I think the issue might be that we're calling sum before we're defining it. Okay. I'm just going to pop that at the top yeah. there and save that and try running again. Uh, yeah, so now we get onto this second error. And that was, so you see, rather than you going ahead and, and solving that, I was, I was keen to show you know, so, so all the you know, the step by step, the different errors. So. For example, we, if we haven't got the method defined, and if it's not defined before the, the test, then we get undefined method sum from an object. Uh, and as you were, um, you know, step ahead of me there, Thomas, uh, not having specified any arguments, we get this kind of uh, argument error here. So we sort of went through a little step there where, you know, I wrote kind of a, a little test of what's supposed to happen. You implemented something. I made a sort of a bit of refactoring there. Um, I, get, I guess there you've generated this... Um, you know, new error. So that's another point where you know we can swap backwards and forwards. Maybe we'll go to me and I will uh, put something in here. So we know that this is taking some kind of an array. So uh, I think the interesting thing is we can actually the parentheses are optional, uh, but let's put them in for clarity there. Uh, now Thomas and I are here are swapping backwards and forwards. You know, very tightly. I mean, there, there's and and that that can vary how often you you want to do it. Um, do you want to kick off that run again there now, Thomas? And let's see if I, if we both see the same output. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it's there at the bottom of the screen. Oh, it's running. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I think um, I think what this means because we're not seeing any error in this case. It's sort of actually the run button sort of also you know kind of deploys this almost. Um, so we'll see later on if we look at um, doing deployment with Sinatra apps and Rails apps and so on that you can see your running app from within Cloud Nine. Um, what what we've got at the moment here is we've got our little um, uh, uh, def sum array. We're call, we're calling the the method, but I think we're not necessarily seeing any of the output. If I go and do uh, Ruby homework uh, zero part, oh, get tab completion as well. Yes, I think yeah, we we basically don't see anything. There's there's no output at the moment because what happens is that this is you know this is being evaluated to check whether it returns zero or not, but we're not. Our test is 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 doing a check, but then it's not doing anything with the um, uh, result. I, I, you know, from for hand rolling my own little test, what I like to use, I think this is is I, I is I like to um, add a little uh, thing here where we say, you know, uh, like a little a little raise step, and then we and this will raise like a, a custom error like so. So this is me refactoring the. Um, uh, our, our test there. If I save that, I think we can. I, I can run that in the command line here. Okay, yeah, and it's getting. Yeah, so now we're getting like an error, like we have for a, a testing 
uh, mm. suite there. So um, I guess, yeah, this is a good point now. We've gotten to another sort of error. This would be a good point to, to, just to swap. Um, Thomas, can, can you see that error on your side? I wonder uh, if we... Let's see. I can. Awesome. If I run... Yeah, I got the same thing. Important. Uh, yes, I run time error some. Ah, uh, you can see that in your output section. Yes. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. So yes. we need to. Uh, we want to fix this, right? Yeah. So let's. Um. Uh. uh yeah. Go, go right ahead. Yeah. So so now um, we've got we've got a problem here that um, our, our our corner case that we've gone for uh, empty array should return zero is not uh, is it's it's not returning a zero there. Okay, so we will pass this in. So in Ruby, we can do, we can call a method on array, right? So we do, go array dot, and how do we summarize? You know, I think it was the, uh, well, it might be um, dot blank. Um, this is a great um, uh, here to, to, to uh, point out how the Ruby documentation, uh, which is also available linked in the homework, there is a great place to go. We can go to class array here, and I wonder, was it? Um, do they have blank? I mean, one immediate thing that we can check is, you know, the size of the um, the array. Mm. Uh, that is what immediately springs to mind. I forget. Oh, is it? Oh, is it empty? Is there an empty method? Um, we'll just check in there. Yeah, I think that there is an em empty method. There we go. So, question mark, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, to so the question mark indicating that it will return a boolean. So what we're going to do, we want to do, say that if array is empty, right, mm -hmm. uh, then, uh, but we don't have to have that in the block anyway. We could have it in, uh, right, uh, then uh, we set some, oh, well, how do we want to do this now? Uh, well, I, I, th I think, you know, and so this is the, you know, the, the, I just have a meta statement here for the, the, the pairing thing is, is, so Thomas is now in the driving role, I'm in the navigator role, and uh, what, I'm watching what he's doing and potentially providing advice. I think could, we could actually use the um, uh, interesting little Ruby thing where we can put the if statement on the end of the uh, line that we're writing. We could just we could do that, yes. We could just yeah. do return zero if array dot empty. Return zero like this, right? Yeah, yeah. I think that uh, let, let's say you could you could kick off run on that. I think if I have the output uh, tab up there and you kick run, uh, will I see the same output as you will see? I'll just switch to your screen there. Yeah. So I think you, your yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think you you've right. Yeah. We're not getting any error now there in the output thing, and so. That indicates, I think, that you've made my little micro test there pass. Mm. Um, and so um, we're now doing. So if we if we carry on with the sort of uh, ping pong style of programming, the idea is that you would now write some sort of test, uh, and we're swapping roles now. So I've been the test writer, and you've been implementing the underlying code. And now you be the test writer, and I will do the code. So do you want to write? So we've kind of done this corner case. And we've got mm -hmm. that working. Uh, do you want to now write, let's say, a um, uh, a test for some other aspect of the sort of the main body, as it were, of this um, of this system. Yeah. So we what we want to do now is uh, to take a, the all the yeah all the integers in the in this array and uh, sum sum them all up, right? Yes. Yes. Exactly. Okay. So. So yeah, I'd say on line ten, you know, maybe copy the. Um, I, I mean, I, I've kind of hacked together this little testing thing. I would be tempted to yeah, copy uh, line nine or type it out again, and um, yeah, adjust that so it's doing a different kind of test. Um, I would be tempted to write the test in after the unless statement and then copy over, copy it over into the thing once we've worked out exactly what it should be doing here. So uh, we want to say something where if 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 the if the sum is actually bigger? Uh... Well, I think what we want to do is we want to have, so we've done a, one of our, our first test cases for where the, the array is an empty array. So now we want a non-empty array. So it could just have the numbers one and two in it, or um, I think it just needs, yeah, we need to have a few integers in there. Um, and then we want to say, you know, what, what, so if you're doing one, two, and three, then our, our method should return 
um, what is it, uh, six probably, if um, if it's working according to the specification. And then having got that set up, we might want to like copy the um, after the unless statement here yeah, and, and stick that, you know, adjust our error message that we're raising um, and uh, do that. Excellent. Yes, yes, that looks that, uh, that looks. Um, that looks about right. right. Yeah, do you want to kick that off and um, see if we get uh, an error message? Yes, we got a runtime error because it's not six. Ah, here we go. Yes, and actually if I scroll down there, I see that as well. Yes, okay, indeed. Right, so now the testing, uh, sorry, the, 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 um, the driver navigator roles swap again. So I've now got some sort of failure here, and I could say, right, well, what I could do there, and this is, almost, this is called one undermanship, is I could... Um, Right, it's almost almost like a sort of I could hard code a solution there, kick off a run, and I could say, oh yes, I've got your test to pass now. Um, but so as a way of exploring um, loopholes in the test, I can then maybe make a different test, for example, which might be uh, to add an additional uh, number to the to to the array there, and then I could update with my own error, click run. And I think if we scroll down, we should eventually see a new error from this new test that I've created on uh, line 12. It seems to be being a bit slow there. I might try running it from the, um, the terminal. Um, that's a yes. So at least from the, from the terminal around there, yeah, the background process, I don't know if you can see on my screen, uh, we've got uh, you know, uh, uh, the runtime error there from line 12. Mm. So... Um, do you want to um, uh, so now we're going to swap roles again? Do you want to um, see if you can try and make my new new test pass? Well, we we have to stop hard coding things. I think I feel. Well, that, and that's um, you know, well that that's again to some extent it's how, it's how charitable one feels. Um, yeah, I, I think probably let's you know stop hard coding things here because it could go on all day, as you say. Mm, yeah. Um, but that's that's an interesting uh, point there. I think about the intuition at which point. To stop hard coding because one could be, you know, going. Oh, we could, we could go on the back and forward. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. But but um, and and I think you know for for simple code that's probably not uh, necessary. The um, uh, yeah. I think I can I can just use this inject method. Well, that's the more advanced method. Yes, absolutely. This is and, yeah. and very 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 Ruby-ish. Yes, inject is I think the way to go. Um, I think this is the one because it should summarize all the. All the uh, all the integers. Yes, yes. Um, I mean, I think there there are a number of different ways to do this, but I think this is probably one of the most uh, Rubyistic uh, ones to do. Let's see if um, so. If you kicked off uh, run again, there. I think the the output thing has got a bit slow for me. I'm going to run it from the terminal again. Um, there. So yeah, that does seem to pass. Mm. Uh, so I think we've completed there. Uh, the first, the first section. Uh, great work. Good show. Um, I think we've also shown how. I mean, so Cloud Nine is is not current. We're not saying you can necessarily do the entire MOOC on this. I think it's great for it. It's, it certainly works for the simpler um, homeworks. Uh, I think with a little effort, it may work all the way through. Um, it, and it's great if you've got a good internet, internet connection. Sometimes it does. Uh, you know, you can get. You know. Like this, I don't know. Did did um, did any of I? Yeah, I I still haven't seen. Oh, I'm scrolling down. Okay, I think one of the uh, Ruby processes kind of got lost in the cloud, but it looks like there it's running for me. You're not getting any errors on your side, are you, Thomas? No, no. no. Okay, great. Well, I th I think we've shown in principle there how one can use a Hangout with Cloud Nine uh, to do sort of uh, ping pong pairing back and forth on the uh, first part of that. Homework Zero, thanks so much for helping me out with that, Thomas. No problems. Always welcome. Always a pleasure. Great stuff. Okay. Bye for now.